disorder it is characterized by the presence of abdominal pain or discomfort which may be associated with defecation or accompanied by a change in bowel habit this is very important uh, people with the ibs present with varying symptom profiles most commonly they are have diarrhea predominant or they are constipation predominant or they have alternating sim symptom profiles so what is ibs first of all it's a syndrome one man's constipation and other man's normality so if you ask the patient who is saying that i am uh, ibs with constipation so when you uh, hear its history so you come to know that this is normal bowel habit but according to this patient he or she has uh, constipation or ibs cause is unknown 20% seem to start after an episode of gastroenteritis so there are a few earliest descriptions of symptoms defining ibs it is not a new disease it's an old disease so first of all w kuming in 1849 described it as the bowels are at one time constipated at another legs in the same person how the disease has two such different symptoms i do not profess to explain other historical terms which used um, for ibs is mucus colitis chronic spasm neurogenic mucus colitis irritable colon unstable colon nervous colon spastic colon nervous colitis spastic colitis these are the historical terms so then 1962 which already and true love label it as irritable colon syndrome and then finally in 1966 it got the name of irritable bowel syndrome by cj dailer so a good set of bowels is worth more to a man than any quantity of brains this is very important there is nothing in life as underrated as a good bowel movement prevalence ibs is most commonly affects people between the ages of 20 and 30 years and is twice as common in women as in men prevalence in the general population is estimated to be between 10 and 20% Recent trends indicate that there is a good, significant prevalence of IBS in older patient as well. So, IBS diagnosis should be a consideration when an older person presents with unexplained abdominal symptoms. What are the hallmark symptoms of IBS? Chronic or recurrent GI symptoms. It may be lower abdominal pain or discomfort, altered bowel function, which is urgency, altered stool consistency. Like sometimes they have diarrhea, sometimes they have constipation, or feeling of incomplete evacuation, bloating. Patient presented with bloating or abdominal distension, and not explained by identifiable structure or biochemical abnormalities. we defined irritable bowel syndrome according to room 3 criteria so what is the room 3 criteria so recurrent abdominal pain or discomfort at least 3 days per month in the last 3 months associated with two or more of the following symptoms improvement with the defecation onset associated with a change in frequency of stool onset associated with a change in form or appearance of the stool so this is a very famous Uh, criteria and it commonly uh, ask in the mcqs or bcqs so you guys should know what is the criteria for the diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome and this criterion fulfilled for the last 3 months with the symptoms onset at least for 6 months prior to the diagnosis so you have to <coughs> remember this criteria it's very important it has few types <coughs> like i already discussed diarrhea predominant constipation predominant and pain predominant so this is the x ray of ibs uh, c patient constipation predominant showing fecal loading in the large intestine you can appreciate this is fecal loading and this is the picture uh, showing abdominal pain how patient feel about the abdominal pain you can well appreciate uh, in this picture the feeling of pain uh, usually patient doctor bolte hain it starts from the epigastric area then it uh, it goes to the back and then it goes to the pelvis so it's a colic type pain and it it radiates to the whole abdomen and this picture is showing bloating so this woman is not pregnant it she has bloating uh, commonly agar aap kahe to patient bolte hain ki doctor sab khana kha ke mera pet phool jata hai in common word aerophagia 
the bloating is caused by aerophagia aerophagia is usually occurs in patient with, during stress uh, they are they uh, they uh, engulf air or they are mouth breathers which leads to the bloating chronic diarrhea is the most common complaint of ibsd so these are few key facts about ibs can cause great discomfort sometimes intermittent or continuous for many decades in a patient's life can significantly disrupt daily life can change a negative impact on quality of life patient is disturbed and um, and don't give concentration on the work if uh, if he or she has symptoms of ibs current treatment options are dietary modification fiber supplements pharmacologic agents psychotherapy so success of current treatment options is in addressing multiple symptoms of I- ibs is limited so ibs consultation patient so most commonly the patients are female 70% and 30% female 75% of the patient non consult uh, not consult with any of the doctor and 25% of the patient consult with the doctor with the symptoms in 25% of out of 25% of the patient majority of the patient goes to the primary care and only this small tip of the patient goes to the specialists like gastroenterologist for the management of ibs productivity burden asceticism from work or school during the last uh, 12 months this is a study this is a graph taken from the study so um in ibs patient there is a lot lot of absentees from the school and from the work due to their symptoms evolution of mechanistic hypothesis in ibs so uh, usually there is abnormal motali- motility in these patient there is visceral hypersensitivity there is brain gut interaction in these patients and then there is five ht medi- mediated visceral sensitivity and gut motility so by uh, bio uh, psychosocial disorder you can say it's the psychosocial motility sensory and then infections so there are some uh, psychosocial factors which leads to altered sensation in the gut and uh, uh, then there is a, a vagal stimulation due to so- psychosocial factors which leads to altered mortality which leads to altered sensation then altered sensation leads to again um, a psychosocial factors and then there is a sympathetic uh, stimulation in the brain enteric nervous system it controls motility and security functions of the intestine and it is semi autonomous actions modified by parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems may function independently it contains many neurotransmitters like including 5ht substance p vasoactive intestinal peptide cgrp so these are the neurotransmitters local neurotransmitters which affects the motility of the gut ibs current thinking on the pathophysiology defects in the enteric nervous system may lead to the hallmark symptoms of the ibs which is visceral hypersensitivity so uh, ibs seems to be a very uh, easy uh, disease but there are lot of pathophysiological things and and for the student point of view and if you are appearing in usml exams or some other exams so they are very common questions regarding ibs and this visceral hypersensitivity and what are the mediators which are involved in this visceral hypersensitivity and the famous one is 5ht bradykinin tachykinin cgrp and neurotropin so you guys all should remember all these neurotransmitters primary motility disorder of gi tract is mediated by 5ht and this acetylcholine motilin nitric oxide somatostatin substance p and vip physiological and you can appreciate this physiological distribution of this 5ht so mostly this 5ht receptors are located 95% in the gi tract enterochromaffin cells and only 5% in the brain so 5ht receptor effects is mediate reflexes controlling gastrointestinal motility and secretion mediate perception of the visceral pain so comparison of uh, pain threshold of ibs patient and control so you can well uh, imagine Uh, in this study they placed a balloon in the rectum and sigmoid and they distended the balloon 
so in normal patient the pain threshold is very low as compared to the ibs patient so you can well imagine they have visceral hypersensitivity normal persons have very low threshold but ibs oh, remarkably they have more remarkably pain threshold again this is the study the clonic distension with this balloon or ice water immersion test so you can imagine that ivs patient has marked pain threshold increased pain pain threshold as compared to the normal subjects so for the diagnosis of ibs identify abdominal pain as dominant symptoms with alter bowel function look for red flag signs like weight loss bleeding per rectum uh and all these things performed and uh, any uh, history of family history of malignancies performed diagnostic test physical examination to rule out organic disease make and confirm diagnosis initiate treatment program as part of diagnostic approach follow up in 3 to 6 weeks red flags may suggest an alternative or coexisting diagnosis so you have to rule out uh, anemia fever persistent diarrhea rectal bleeding severe constipation leads to abdominal obstruction weight loss nocturnal symptoms of pain and abnormal bowel function usually in ibs patient they don't have nocturnal symptoms if your patient have nocturnal symptoms then you have to rule out other diseases as well family history as already told you celiac disease and new onset of symptoms in patient 50 plus years of age diagnostic test what when and who so if patient has typical features of ibs if patient has less than 50 years of age order cbc electrolytes lfts screen stool for occult blood and consider sigmoidoscopy if it's more than 50 years of age order cbc electrolytes lfts and perform a colonoscopy or air contrast barium anemia with sigmoidoscopy so you have to rule out other uh, diagnosis or you should consider differential diagnosis like malabsorption which includes celiac disease dietary factors some patients have lactose intolerance so you in diarrhea predominant ibs so you have to rule out lactose intolerance as well in these patients infections um, inflammatory bowel disease psychological disorders gyne sometimes gynecological disorders pelvic disorders they lead to the uh, abdominal chronic abdominal pain and symptoms like this and miscellaneous other disorders current management of ibs first you have to establish the diagnosis reassure the patient that there is no serious organic disease or alarming symptoms success of current treatment options in addressing multiple symptoms of ibs has been limited which i already told you in the beginning so number one treatment option in ibs patient is education and reassurance then dietary modification like if your patient is not taking enough fiber you have to add uh, advise fiber in the diet you have to advise uh, in increase intake of water in your constipation predominant patient or if your patient has lactose intolerance in diarrhea predominant you have to stop the the dairy products so you can add fiber symptomatic treatment psychological or behavioral options and you have some you have to uh, have some realistic goals in the management Currently available treatments for IBS is diacyclamine hydrochloride hyoscyamine sulfate this is for the pain uh, clidinium bromide, uh, bromide with chlorodiazepoxide allocitron this is for the diarrhea predominant IBS then is a drug which is launched in around 2010 and uh, uh, an FDA approved it for the irritable bowel syndrome patient without constipation it is rifaximin this is a wonder drug and it has a very good results so it is rifaximin is an oral non systemic broad spectrum antibiotic that targets the gut and is associated with low risk of bacterial resistance in summary the results of these two phase 3 studies showed that treatment with rifaximin at a dose of 550 mg 3 times daily for 14 days provide better relief of symptoms of ibs than the placebo for up to 10 weeks after completion of therapy So this is the drug um, uh, rifaximin. You can use it with uh, hepatic encephalopathy or in IBS relief. You have to give it 550 milligram three times a day for 14 days. Antispasmodics, anticholinergics, mebavirin, hydrochloride. It uh, it relieves the pain. It is a smooth muscle relaxant. 
by anti cholinergic effects or direct action on smooth muscles you can give anti diarrheals uh, if increase to firmness decrease to frequency like loperamide diphenoxylate atropine mebivirin laxative and bulking agents for symptomatic treatment of constipation like increased dietary fiber or psyllium osmotic laxatives magnesium sulfate lactulose stimulant laxatives some laxatives and bulking agents can exacerbate abdominal pain and bloating so you have to rule out symptomatic treatment pain and uh, in uh, in patient not responding to inducts you can add tricyclic antidepressants or sri uh, for is a for patient with severe or refractory pain so multiple medication needed to treat multiple symptoms so you can add uh, tricyclic antidepressant anti diarrheal in your diarrhea predominant patient and with um, bulking agents with um, ssri in your constipation predominant patients non traditional remedies are also there there are some chinese medicine or some peppermint oil which relaxes the gi smooth muscle um some people go for the acupuncture for the pain management probiotics is a, this is a new uh, entity for the management of uh, bloating and diarrhea predominant uh, ibs sometimes antibiotics like this actimin you can give surgical therapy for ibs non functioning gall bladder disease chronic appendicitis uterine fibroids and tortuous colon maybe these may be a symptoms of ibs so you have to rule out them and if there is something problem with this appendicitis or gall bladder so you have to go for the surgery otherwise ibs symptoms really improve after surgery ibs patients are two to three times more likely to undergo unnecessary unnecessary surgery because sometimes we come across patient with persistent upper abdominal pain not improving with any symptoms we can advise them for cholecystectomy but even after cholecystectomy their pain their symptoms persist take home points ibs is a chronic medical condition characterized by characterized by um sorry for the interruption so it is characterized by diarrhea constipation uh, bloating passage of mucus and feeling of incomplete evacuation precise etiology of ibs is unknown and therefore treatment is focused on relieving symptoms rather than curing the disease